Introduction to Ardors and Endurances. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Diana Schmidt. Ardors and Endurances by Robert Nichols. Excerpt from An Introduction to the Scientific Study of English Poetry by Mark Liddell. My thanks are due to the editor of the Times and of the Nation, to the editors of the Palantine Review, and to Messrs. Blackwell, Oxford, the publishers of Oxford Poetry, 1915, and Oxford Poetry, 1916, for permission to reprint certain of these poems. R. M. B. N. 1917. Introduction. 1. Of the Nature of the Poet We are often so impressed by the power of poetry that we think of it as something made by a wonderful and unusual person. We do not realize the fact that all the wonder and marvel is in our own brains, that the poet is ourselves. He speaks our language better than we do, merely because he is more skillful with it than we are. His skill is part of our skill his power of our power generations of english-speaking men and women have made us sensible to these things and our sensibility comes from the same source that the poet's power of stimulating it comes from given a little more sensitiveness to external stimuli a little more power of associating ideas a coordination of the functions of expression somewhat more apt a sense of rhythm somewhat keener than the average. Given these things, we should be poets, too, even as he is. He is one of us. 2. Of what English poetry consists. English poetry is not a rhythm of sound, but a rhythm of ideas, and the flow of attention, stresses, i.e., varying qualities of words and cadence, which determines its beauty is inseparably connected with the thought, for each of them is a judgment of identity, or a judgment of relation, or an expression of relation, and not a thing of mere empty sound. He who would think of it as a pleasing arrangement of vocal sounds has missed all chance of ever understanding its meaning. There awaits him only the barren generalities of a foreign prosody, tedious, pedantic, fruitless, and he will flounder ceaselessly amid the scattered timbers of its iambuses, spondees, dactyls, tribrocks, never reaching the firm ground of truth. An Introduction to the Scientific Study of English Poetry by Mark Liddell Published by Grant Richards, 1902, this remarkable book Establishing English Poetry as a Thing Governed from Within by Its Own Necessities, and Not by Rules of Aesthetics Imposed on It from Without, formulates principles which, unperceived, have governed English poetry from the earliest times, which find their greatest exemplar in Shakespeare, and which, though beginning to be realized by the less pedantic of the moderns, are in its pages for the first time lucidity expounded and, such is their adequacy, can, in the end, only be regarded as indubitably proven. R. M. B. N. 1917 End of Introduction The Summons 1. 2. By Robert Nichols Read for LibriVox.org by Ian King. Two. Asleep within the deadest hour of night, and turning with the earth, I was aware how suddenly the eastern curve was bright, as when the sun arises from his lair. But not the sun arose, it was thy hair shaken up heaven in tossing leagues of light. Since then, I know that neither night nor day may I escape thee, O oh, my heavenly hell. Awake, in dreams, thou springest to waylay, and should I dare to die, I know full well whose voice would mock me 
in the morning bell, Whose face would greet me in hell's fiery way. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Summons to The Past by Robert Nichols. Read for LibriVox.org by Ian King. The Past. How to escape the bondage of the past. I fly thee, yet my spirit finds no calms, save when she deems her rocked within those arms, to which, from which, she ne'er was caught or cast. O oh, sadness of a heart, so spent in vain, that drank its age's fuel in an hour, for whom the whole world burning had not power, to quick with life the smouldered wick again. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Summons, 3. The Reckoning, by Robert Nichols, read for LibriVox.org, by Ian King. The Reckoning. The whole world burns, and with it burns my flesh. Arise, thou spirit spent by sterile tears. Thine eyes were ardent once, thy looks were fresh, thy brow shone bright amid thy shining peers. Fame calls thee not, thou who hast vainly strayed so far for her, nor passion, who in the past gave thee her ghost to wed and to be paid, nor love, whose anguish only learned to last. Honour, it is that calls. Canst thou forget once thou wert strong? Listen, the solemn call sounds but this once again. Put by regret for summons missed, or thou hast missed them all. Body is ready, fortune pleased. O oh, let not the poor past cost the proud future's fall. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Farewell to Place of Comfort by Robert Nichols. Read for LibriVox.org by Ian King. Farewell to Place of Comfort. For the last time, maybe, upon the knoll I stand. The eve is golden, languid, sad. Day, like a tragic actor, plays his role to the last whispered word, and falls gold-clad. I, too, take leave of all I ever had. They shall not say I went with heavy heart. Heavy I am, but soon I shall be free. I love them all, but, oh, I now depart, a little sadly, strangely, fearfully, as one who goes to try a mystery. The bell is sounding down in Dedham Vale. Be still, O oh bell. Too often standing here, when all the air was tremulous, fine and pale, thy golden notes so calm, so still, so clear, out of my stony heart has struck a tear. And now tears are not mine. I have release from all the former and the later pain. Like the mid-sea, I rock in boundless peace, soothed by the charity of the deep sea rain. Calm rain, calm sea, calm found, long sought in vain. O oh, bronze and pines, evening of gold and blue, steep mellow slope, brimmed twilight pools below, hushed trees, still veil dissolving in the dew, farewell. Farewell, there is no more to do. We have been happy, happy now, I go. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Approach, One in the Grass, Halt by Roadside, by Robert Nichols. Read for LibriVox.org, by Recording Person.
One, in the grass, halt by roadside. In my tired, helpless body, I feel my sunk heart ache. But suddenly, loudly, the far, the great guns shake. Is it sudden terror? Burdens my heart, my hand? Flies to my head, I listen, and do not understand. Is death so near, then, from this blaze of light? Do I plunge suddenly into vortex, night? Guns again, the quiet, shakes at the vengeful voice. It is terrible pleasure. I do not fear. I rejoice. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Approach to The Day's March by Robert Nichols Read for LibriVox.org by Recording Person To The Day's March The battery grides and jingles, mile succeeds to mile. Shaking the noonday sunshine, the guns lunge out a while, and then are still a while. We ambled along the highway, the reeking powdery dust ascends and cakes our faces with a striped, sweaty crust. Under the still sky's violet, the heart throbs on the air, the white road's dusty radiance assumes a dark glare. With a head hot and heavy, and eyes that cannot rest, and a black heart burning in a stifled breast. I sit in the saddle, I feel the road unroll, and keep my senses straightened towards tomorrow's goal. There over unknown meadows, which we must reach at last, day and night thunders a black and chilly blast. Heads forget heaviness, hearts forget spleen, for by that mighty winnowing, being is blown clean. Light in the eyes again, strength in the hand, a spirit dares, dies, forgives, and can understand. And best, love comes back again, after grief and shame, and along the wind of death throws a clean flame. The battery grides and jingles, mile succeeds to mile, suddenly battering the silence, the guns burst out a while. I lift my head and smile. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Approach 3 Nearer by Robert Nichols Read for LibriVox.org by Recording Person The Approach 3 Nearer Nearer and ever nearer My body tired but tense Hovers twixt vague pleasure And tremulous confidence Arms to have and to use them And a soul to be made Worthy if not worthy If afraid unafraid To endure for a little to endure and have done, men I love about me, over me the sun, and should at last suddenly fly the speeding death, the four great quarters of heaven receive this little breath. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Battle One Noon by Robert Nichols. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. One, noon. It is midday. The deep trench glares. A buzz and blaze of flies. The hot wind puffs the giddy airs. The great sun rakes the skies. No sound in all the stagnant trench where forty standing men endure the sweat and grit and stench like cattle in a pen. Sometimes a sniper's bullet whirs or twangs the whining wire. Sometimes a soldier sighs and stirs as in hell's frying fire. From out a high cool cloud descends an aeroplane's far moan. The sun strikes down, the thin cloud rends, the black speck travels on. And sweating, dizzied, isolate, in the hot trench beneath. We bide the next shrewd move of fate, be it of life or death. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Battle Two Night Bombardment by Robert Nichols. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Two Night Bombardment Softly in the silence the evening rain descends. 
The soft wind lifts the rain mist, flurries it, and spends its grief in mournful sighs, drifting from field to field, soaking the draggled sprays which the low hedges wield as they labor in the wet in the load of the wind. The last light is dimming, night comes on behind. I hear no sound but the wind and the rain, and trample of horses, loud and lost again, where the wagons in the mist rumble dimly on, bringing more shell. The last gleam is gone. It is not day or night, only the mist unroll and blind with their sorrow, the sight of my soul. I hear the wind weeping in the hollow overhead. She goes searching for the forgotten dead, hidden in the hedges or trodden into muck, under the trenches or maybe limply stuck somewhere in the branches of a high lonely tree. He was a sniper once. They never found his body. I see the mist drifting. I hear the wind and rain. And on my clammy face, the oozed breath of the slain seems to be blowing. Almost I have heard in the shuddering drift the lost dead's last word. Go home, go home, go to my house. Knock at the door, knock hard, arouse. My wife and the children, that you must do. What do you say? Tell the children, too. Knock at the door, knock hard, arouse. The living, say, the dead won't come back to this house. Oh, but it's cold. I soak in the rain. Shrapnel found me. I shan't come home again. No, not home again. The morning voices trail away into rain, into darkness. The pale soughing of the night drifts on in between. The voices were as if the dead had never been. O oh, melancholy heavens, O oh, melancholy fields, the glad full darkness grows complete and shields me from your appeal. With a terrible delight, I hear far guns low like oxen at the night. Flames disrupt the sky. The work has begun. Action! My guns crash, flame, rock and stun. Again and again. Soon the sowing night is loud with their clamor and leaps with their light. The imperative chorus rises, sonorous and fell. My heart glows lighted as by fires of hell. Sharply I pass the terse orders down. The guns blare and rock. The hissing rain is blown athwart the hurtled shell that shrilling, shrilling, goes away into the dark to burst a cloud of rose over German trenches. A pause. I stand in sea, lifting into the night like founts incessantly. The pistol lights pale spores upon the glimmering air. Under them furrowed trenches, empty. Pallid, bare, and rain snowing trenchward, ghostly and white. O oh, dead in the hedges, sleep ye well tonight. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Battle Three Comrades, an episode by Robert Nichols. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Three Comrades, an episode. Before, before he was aware, 
the very light had risen on the air. It hung glistering. And he could not stay his hand from moving to the barbed wire's broken strand. A rifle cracked. He fell. Night waned. He was alone. A heavy shell whispered itself passing high, high overhead. His wound was wet to his hand, for still it bled on to the glimmering ground. Then with a slow, vain smile, his wound he bound, knowing, of course, he'd not see home again. Home, whose thought he put away. His men whispered, Where's Mr. Gates? Out on the wire. I'll get him, said one. Dawn blinked, and the fire of the Germans heaved up and down the line. Stand to! Too late! I'll get him! Oh, the swine! When we might get him in yet safe and whole, Corporal didn't see him fall out on patrol. Or he'd have got on. Shh! No talking there. A whisper. I went down at the last flare. Meanwhile, the Maxims talk, talk, talked. Their swish of bullets told death lurked against the wish. No hope for him. His corporal, as one shamed, vainly and helplessly, his ill luck blamed. Then Gates slowly saw the morn break in a rosy peace through the lone thorn by which he lay and felt the dawn wind pass whispering through the pallid, stalky grass of no man's land. And the tears came, scaldingly sweet, more lovely than a flame. He closed his eyes he thought of home and grit his teeth. He knew no help could come. The silent sun over the earth held sway. Occasional rifles cracked and far away a heedless speck. A plane slid on alone, like a fly traversing a cliff of stone. I must get back, said Gates aloud, and heaved at his body. But it lay bereaved of any power. He could not wait till night, and he lay still. Blood swam across his sight. Then with a groan, no luck ever. Well, I must die alone. Occasional rifles cracked. A cloud that shone, gold-rimmed, blackened the sun and then was gone. The sun still smiled, the grass sang in its play. Someone whistled, over the hills and far away. Gates watched silently the swift, swift sun burning his life before it was begun. Suddenly he heard Corporal Timmins' voice. Now then, hurry up with that tea. Hi, Ginger. Bill. His men. Timmins and Jones and Wilkinson, the Bard, and Hughes and Simpson. It was hard not to see them. Wilkinson, stubby, grim, with his, no sir, yes sir, and the slim Simpson, indeed sir? While well, it seemed he winked, because his smiling left eye always blinked. And Corporal Timmins, straight and blond and wise, with his quiet, scanning, level, hazel eyes, and all the others, tunics that didn't fit, a dozen different sorts of eyes. Oh, it was hard to lie there. Yet he must, but no. I've got to die. I'll get to them. I'll go. Inch by inch he fought, breathless and mute, dragging his carcass like a famished brute. His head was hammering, and his eyes were dim. A bloody sweat seemed to ooze out of him and freeze along his spine. Then he'd lie still before another effort of his will took him one nearer yard. The parapet was reached. 
he could not rise to it. A lookout screeched, Mr. Gates! Three figures in one breath leaped up. Two figures fell in toppling death. And Gates was lifted in. Who's hit? said he. Timmins and Jones. Why did they that for me? I'm gone already. Gently they laid him prone and silently watched. He twitched. They heard him moan. Why for me? His eyes roamed round and none replied. I see it was alone I should have died. They shook their heads. Then, is the doctor here? He's coming, sir. He's hurrying, no fear. No good. Lift me. They lifted him. He smiled and held his arms out to the dim, and in a moment passed beyond their ken, hearing him whisper, Oh, my men, my men. In Hospital, London, Autumn, 1915. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Battle, four, behind the lines, night, France, by Robert Nichols, read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Four, behind the lines, night, France. At the crossroads, I halt, and stand stock still. The linked and flickering constellations climb slowly the spread black heaven's immensity. The wind wanders like a thought at fault. Within the close, shuttered cottage nigh, I hear, while its fearful, aged master sleeps like the dead, a slow clock chime, with solemn thrill, the most somber hour of time. And see stand in the cottage's garden chill the two white crosses, one at each grave's head. O oh, France, 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 I loved you, love you still. But oh, why took you not my life instead? End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Battle Five at the Wars by Robert Nichols. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Five at the Wars. Now that I am taken away and may not see another day, what is it to my eye appears? What sound rings in my stricken ears? Not even the voice of any friend, or eyes beloved, world without end. But scenes and sounds of the countryside, in far England, across the tide. In upland field, when spring's begun, mellow beneath the evening sun. A circle of loose and lichened wall, over which seven red pines fall. An orchard of wizened blossoming trees, wherein the nesting chaffinches begin again the self same song all the late April daytime long. Paths that lead a shelving course between the chalk scarp and the gorse by English downs, and oh, too well I hear the hidden clanking bell of wandering sheep. I see the brown twilight of the huge empty down, soon blotted out, for now a lane glitters with warmth of maytime rain, and on a shooting briar I see a yellow bird who sings to me. O oh, yellow hammer, 
once i heard thy yaffle when no other bird could to my sunk heart comfort bring but now i would not have thee sing so sharp thy note is with the pain of england i may not see again yet sing thy song there answereth deep in me a voice which saith the gorse upon the twilight down the english loam so sunset brown the bowed pines and the sheep bells clamour the wet lit lane and the yellow hammer the orchard and the chaffinch song only to the brave belong and he shall lose their joy for a if their price he cannot pay who shall find them dearer far enriched by blood after long war and a poem this recording is in the public domain battle six out of trenches the barn twilight by robert nichols read for LibriVox.org by nemo six out of trenches the barn twilight in the raftered barn we lie sprawl scrawl postcards laugh and speak just mere men a trifle weary, worn in heart a trifle weak. Because all way at close of day, thought steals to England far away. Alf! Oh, a, eh. Get us a tomb, mate. Well, what say? Swipe the policeman's holiday. Tiddle iddle um tum 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 sprawling on my aching back think i not but i am glad dear rare lads of pick and pack ay me too i'm sad i'm sad some must die maybe i oh pray it take them suddenly bill what ho concertina let it go if you were the only girl, cheero, if you were the only girl, damn, abide with me, not now. Well, if you must, just your way. It racks me till the tears nigh flow. The tune seesaws, I turn, I pray, behind my hand, shaken, unmanned, in groans that God may understand miracle let let them all survive this hell here trumpeter what are you sounding swell my god i guess indeed too well the broken heart eyes front proud knell grant but mine sound with their farewell it's the last post i'm sounding and a poem this recording is in the public domain. Battle 7 Battery Moving Up to a New Position from Rest Camp Dawn by Robert Nichols Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo 7 Battery Moving Up to a New Position from Rest Camp Dawn not a sign of life we rouse in any square closed shuttered house that flanks the road we amble down toward far trenches through the town the dark snow slushy empty street tingle of frost in brow and feet horse breath goes dimly up like smoke no sound but the smacking stroke of a sergeant flings each arm out and across to keep him warm and the sudden splashing crack of ice pools broken by our track more dark houses yet no sign of life and axles creak and whine the splash of hooves the strain of trace 
clatter we cross the market-place deep quiet again and on we lurch under the shadow of a church its tower ascends fog wreathed and grim within its aisles a light burns dim when marvellous from overhead like abrupt speech of one deemed dead speech moved by some superior will a bell tolls thrice and then is still and suddenly i know that now the priest within with shining brow lifts high the small round of the host the server's tingling bell is lost in clash of the greater overhead peace like a wave descends is spread while watch the peasant's reverent eyes the bell's bloom trembles hangs and dies o oh, people who bow down to see the miracle of calvary the bitter and the glorious bow down bow down and pray for us once more our anguished way we take toward our golgotha to make for all our lovers sacrifice again the troubled bell tolls thrice and slowly slowly lifted up dazzles the overflowing cup o oh, worshipping fond multitude remember us too and our blood turn hearts to us as we go by salute those about to die plead for them the deep bell toll their sacrifice must soon be whole entreat you for such hearts as break with a premonitory ache of bodies whose feet hands and side must soon be torn pierced crucified sue for them and all of us who the world over suffer thus who have scarce time for prayer and deed who only march and die and bleed the town is left, the road leads on, bluely glaring in the sun, toward where, in the sunrise gate, death, honor, and fierce battle wait. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Battle 8 Eve of Assault Infantry Going Down to Trenches by Robert Nichols Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo 8. Eve of Assault Infantry Going Down to Trenches Downward slopes the wild red sun We lie around a waiting gun Soon we shall load and fire and load But hark, a sound beats down the road Hello, what's up? Let's have a look. Come on, Ginger, drop that book. What an L a bloody noise. It's the Yorks and Lanks, me boys. So we crowd here, watch them come. One man drubbing on a drum, a crazy, high mouthed organ blowing, tin cans rattling, cat calls crowing, and above their rhythmic feet, a whirl of shrilling loud and sweet, round mouths whistling in unison, shouts, Who's going to out the un? Back us up, mates, God we will. Eve them shells at Kaiser Bill. Art from Lancashire, me lad? Kill e cheer, boys, make em glad. Ip rah, give Fritz the chuck. Good old bloody Yorks, good luck. Cheer! I cannot cheer or speak, lest my voice, my heart must break. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Battle 9. The Assault. By Robert Nichols. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. 9. The Assault. Note 1. 
Zero is the hour agreed upon by the staff when the infantry are to go over the parapet and advance to the assault. Two. Guns are said to lift when, after pounding the front line of the enemy, they lengthen their range and set up a barrier of fire behind his front line to prevent supports moving up. Our infantry then advance. The beating of the guns grows louder. Not long, boys, now. My heart burns whiter, fearfuller, prouder. Hurricanes grow as guns redouble their fire. Through the shaken periscope peeping, I glimpse their wire. Black earth, fountains of earth rise, leaping, spouting like shocks of meeting waves. Death's fountains are playing. Shells like shrieking birds rush over. Crash and din rises higher. A stream of lead raves over us from the left. We safe under cover. Crash, reverberation, crash. Acrid smoke billowing, flash upon flash. Black smoke drifting. The German line vanishes in confusion. Smoke, cries, and cry of our men. Gah, you're swine. You're for it, die. In a hurricane of shell. One cry. We're coming soon. Look out. There is opened hell over there. Fragments fly. Rifles and bits of men whirled at the sky. Dust, smoke, thunder. A sudden bout of machine guns chattering and redoubled battering as if in fury at their daring. No good staring. Time soon now, home, house on a sunny hill, gone like a flickered page. Time soon now, zero, will engage. A sudden thrill. Fix bayonets! Gods, we have our fill of fear, hysteria, exultation, rage, rage to kill. My heart burns hot, whiter and whiter, contracts tighter and tighter, until I stifle with the will long forged, now used, though utterly strained, O oh, pounding heart, baffled, confused, heart panged, head singing, dizzily pained, to do my part. Blindness a moment, sick. There the men are. Bayonets ready. Click. Time goes quick. A stumbled prayer. Somehow, a blazing star in a blue night. Where? Again prayer. The tongue trips. Start. How's time? Soon now. Two minutes or less. The gun's fury mounting higher. Their utmost. I lift a silent hand. Unseen, I bless those hearts will follow me. And beautifully, now beautifully my will grips. Soul calm and round and filmed and white. A shout. Men, no such order as retire. I nod. The whistles twixt my lips. I catch a wan, worn smile at me. Dear men. The pale wristwatch, the quiet hand ticks on amid the din. The guns again rise to a last fury, to a rage, a lust. Kill, pound, kill, pound, pound. Now comes the thrust. My part, dizziness, will, but trust these men. The great guns rise. Their fury seems to burst the earth and skies. They lift. Gather, heart, all thoughts that drift. Be steel, soul. Compress thyself into a round, bright hole. I cannot speak.
Time, time, I hear my whistle shriek. Between teeth set, I fling an arm up, scramble up the grime, over the parapet. I'm up, go on. Something meets us, head down into the storm that greets us. A wail, lights, blur, gone. On, on, lead, lead, hail, spatter, whir, whir. Toward that patch of brown, direction left. Bullets a stream, devouring thought, crying in a dream. Men crumpled, going down. Go on, go. Deafness, numbness, the loudening tornado. Bullets, mud. Stumbling and skating, my voice's strangled shout. Steady pace, boys. The still light, gladness. Look, sir, look out. Ha ha, bunched figures waiting. Revolver leveled quick. Flick, flick. Red as blood. Germans, Germans. Good, oh good. Cool madness. And a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Battle Ten, the Last Morning, by Robert Nichols, read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Ten, the Last Morning. Come now, O death, while I am proud, while joy and awe are breath, and heart beats loud. While all around me stand men that I love, the wind blares aloud, the grand sun wheels above. Naked I stand today before my doom, welcome what comes my way, whatever come. What is there more to ask than that I have? Companions, love, a task, and a deep grave. Come then, eternity, if thou my lot. Having been thus, I cannot be as if I had not. Naked I wait my doom, earth enough shroud, death in thy narrow room, man can lie proud. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Battle 11. Fulfillment. By Robert Nichols. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. 11. Fulfillment Was there love once? I have forgotten her. Was there grief once? Grief yet is mine. Other loves I have, men rough, but men who stir more grief, more joy, than love of thee and thine. Faces cheerful, full of whimsical mirth, Lined by the wind, burned by the sun, Bodies enraptured by the abounding earth, As whose children we are brethren, one. And at any moment may descend hot death To shatter limbs, pulp, tear, blast, Beloved soldiers who love rough life and breath, Not less for dying faithful to the last. Oh, the fading eyes, the grimed face turned bony, oped mouth gushing, fallen head, lessening pressure of a hand shrunk, clammed and stony. Oh, sudden spasm, release of the dead. Was there love once? I have forgotten her. Was there grief once? Grief yet is mine. Oh, loved, living, dying, heroic soldier. All, all my joy, my grief, my love are thine. And a poem, this recording is in the public domain. The Dead, One, The Burial in Flanders, by Robert Nichols, read for LibriVox.org, by Ian King. The Burial in Flanders, H.S.G., Ypres, 1916. 
Through the light rain, I think I see them going. Through the light rain, under the muffled skies. Across the fields, a stealthy wet wind wanders. The mist bedews their tunics, dizzies their brains. Shoulder high, khaki, shoulder by shoulder. They bear my boy upon his last journey. Night is closing. The wind sighs, ebbs and falters. They totter dreaming, deem they see his face. Even as Vikings of old, their slaughtered leader upon their shoulders, so now bear they on all that remains of boy, my friend, their leader, an officer who died for them under the dawn. Oh, that I were there that I might carry, might share that bitter load in grief, in pride. I see upon bronze faces love, submission, and a dumb sorrow for that cheerful boy. Now they arrive. The priest repeats the service. The drifting rain obscures. They are dispersed. The dying sun streams out a moment's radiance. The still wet glistening grave, the trod sward steaming. Sudden great guns startle, echoing on the silence. Thunder, thunder. He has fallen in battle, O oh boy, boy. Lessening now, the rain patters anew. Far guns rumble and shudder, and night descends upon the desolate plain. Lawford, September 1916 End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Dead, Two, Boy By Robert Nichols Read for LibriVox.org By Ian King Boy In a far field, away from England, Lies a boy I friended, With a care like love. All day the wide earth aches, the cold wind cries, the melancholy clouds drive on above. There, separate from him by a little span, two eagle cousins, generous, reckless, free, two Grenfells lie, and my boy is made man, one with these elder knights of chivalry. Boy, who expected not this dreadful day, yet leaped a soldier at the sudden call, drank as your fathers, deeper though than they, the soldier's cup of anguish, blood and gall. Not now as friend, but as a soldier, I salute you fallen, for the soldier's name our greatest honour is, if worthily these wayward hearts assume and bear the same. The soldier's is a name none recognise, saving his fellows. Deeds are all his flower. He lives, he toils, he suffers, and he dies. And if not all in vain, this is his dower. The soldier is the martyr of a nation, expresses, but is subject to its will. His is the pride in noble's resignation, as his the rebel spirit to fulfil. Anonymous, he takes his country's name, becomes its blindest vassal, though its lord by force of arms. Its shame is called his shame, as it's the glory gathered by his sword. Lonely he is, he has nor friend nor lover, sith in his body he is dedicate. His comrades only share his life, or offer their further deeds. To one more heart oblate. Living, he's made an argument beyond for others' peace. But when hot wars have birth, for all his brother's safety becomes bond to fate or whatsoever sways this earth. Dying, his mangled body to inter it, he doth bequeath him into comrade hands. His soul he renders to some captain spirit That knows, admires, pities, and understands. All this you knew by that which doth reside deeper than learning. 
by apprehension of ancient dark and melancholy pride. You were a soldier true, and died as one. All day the cold wind cries, the clouds unroll, but to the cloud and wind I cry, be still. What need of comfort has the heroic soul? What soldier finds a soldier's grave is chill. Lawford, September 1916 End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Dead, Three, Plaint of Friendship by Death Broken by Robert Nichols, read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. Plaint of Friendship by Death Broken, R.P. Lose, 1915. God, if thou livest, thine eye on me bend, and stay my grief and bring my pain to end, pain for my lost, the deepest, rarest friend man ever had. Whence groweth this despair? I had a friend, but oh, he is now dead. I had a vision, for which he has bled. I had happiness, but it is fled. God help me now, for I must needs despair. His eyes were dark and sad, yet never sad. In them moved somber figures, sable-clad. They were the deepest eyes man ever had. They were my solemn joy now my despair. In my perpetual night they on me look, reading me slowly, and I cannot brook their silent beauty, for nor crack nor nook can cover me, but they shall find me there. His face was straight, his mouth was wide yet trim, his hair was tangled black, and through its dim softness his perplexed hand would writhe and swim. Hands that were small on arms, strong knit yet spare. He stood no taller than our common span, swam but nor farther leaped, nor faster ran. I know him spirit now, who seemed a man. God help me now, for I must needs despair. His voice was low and clear, yet it could rise and beat in indignation at the skies. Then no man dared to meet his fire filled eyes. And even I, his own friend, did not dare. With humorous wistfulness he spoke to us, Yet there was something more mysterious, Beyond his words or silence, glorious, I know not what, but we could feel it there. I mind now how we sat one winter night, While past his open window raced The bright snow torrent golden in the hot firelight. I see him smiling at the streamered air. I watched him to the open window go, And lean long smiling, whispering to the snow, Play with his hands amid the fiery flow, And when he turned, it flamed amid his hair. Without arose a sudden bell's huge clang, Until a thousand bells in answer rang, And midnight Oxford hummed and reeled and sang, under the whitening fury of the air. His figure standing in the fiery room, behind him the snow seething through the gloom, the great bells shaking, thundering out their doom. Soft fiery snow and night his being were. Yet he could be simply glad and take his choice, walking spring woods, mimicking each bird voice. When he was glad, we learned how to rejoice. If the birds sing, tis to my spite they dare. All women loved him, yet his mother won his tenderness alone, for moon and sun and rain were for him sister, brother, loved one, and in their life he took an equal share. Strength he had too, strength of unrusted will buttressed his natural charity, and ill fared it with him who sought his good to kill. He was its prince and champion anywhere. Yet he had weakness, for he burned too fast, and his unwrecked of body at the last, he in impatience on the bayonets cast, body whose spirit had outsoared them there. I had a friend, but oh, he is now dead. Fate would not let me follow where he led. In him I had happiness, 
but he is dead. God help me now, for I must needs despair. God, if thou livest, and indeed didst send thine only son to be to all a friend, bid his dark pitying eyes upon me bend, and his hand heal, or I must needs despair. In Hospital, Autumn, 1915 End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Dead Four by the Wood by Robert Nichols. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Four by the Wood. How still the day is, and the air how bright! A thrush sings and is silent in the wood. The hillside sleeps dizzy with heat and light. A rhythmic murmur fills the quietude. A woodpecker prolongs his leisured flight, rising and falling on the solitude. But there are those who far from yon wood lie, buried within the trench where all were found. A weight of mold oppresses every eye. Within that cabin close, their limbs are bound. And there they rot amid the long, profound, disastrous silence of gray earth and sky. These once, too, rested, where now rests but one, who scarce can lift his panged and heavy head, who drinks in grief the hot light of the sun, whose eyes watch dully the green branches spread, who feels his currents ever slowlier run, whose lips repeat a silent, dead, all dead. O youths to come shall drink air warm and bright, shall hear the bird cry in the sunny wood. All my young England fell today in fight. That bird, that wood, was ransomed by our blood. I pray you when the drum rolls, let your mood be worthy of our deaths and your delight. 1916 End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Aftermath, One, At the Ebb, by Robert Nichols, read for LibriVox.org by Nima. One, At the Ebb. Alone, upon the monotonous ocean's verge, I take my stand, and view with heavy eye, the gray wave rise, I hear its sullen surge its bubbling rush and sudden downward sigh. My friends are dead. There fades from me the light of her warm face I loved. Upon me stare in the dull noon or deadest hour of night the smiling lips and chill eyes of despair. A light wind blows. I hear the low wave steal in and collapse like a despondent breath. My life has ebbed. I neither see nor feel. I am suspended between life and death. Again the wave caves in. Oh, I am worn smoother than any pebble on the beach. I would dissolve to that whence I was born, or I'll wave bide beyond the long wave's reach. O oh, will, Thou only strengthener of man's heart, when all is gone, love, and the love of friends, when even earth's comfort has become a part of that futility, nor breaks, nor mends. Strengthen me now against these utmost wrongs. Stay my wrecked spirit within thy control, that men may find some fury in my songs, which like strong wine, shall fortify the soul. Beneath Gold Cap, June, 1916 End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Aftermath, Two, Alone By Robert Nichols 
Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Two, alone. The gray wind in the gray sea, tossing under the long gray sky. My heart is lonelier than the wind. My heart is emptier than the sky and beats more heavily than the cold surge beneath the gull, wheeling with his reiterant cry of loneliness, all, all is lone, alone, and so am I. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Aftermath 3 Thanksgiving by Robert Nichols Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo 3. Thanksgiving Amazement fills my heart tonight. Amaze and awful fears. I am a ship that sees no light, but blindly onward steers. Flung toward heaven's toppling rage, sunk between steep and steep, a lost and wondrous fight I wage with the embattled deep. I neither know nor care at length where drives the storm about. Only I summon all my strength and swear to ride it out. Yet give I thanks, despite these wars, my ship, though blindly blown, long lost to sun nor moon nor stars, still stands up alone. I need no trust in borrowed spars. My strength is yet my own. And a poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Aftermath 4 Annihilated By Robert Nichols Read for LibriVox.org By Nemo 4 Annihilated. Upon the sweltering seas, enormous round, a smoke, a dazzle, brown and brown and gold, a hushed light falls. Then clouds without a sound darken the sea within their curtains fold. The somber clouds through which the sick sun climbs smoke slowly on. Below there is no breath. The long black beach turns livid. The sea chimes. I taste the fullness of my spirit's death. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Aftermath 5 Shut of Night By Robert Nichols Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo 5 Shut of night. The sea darkens, waves roar and rush, the wind rises, the last birds haste. One star over Eve's bitter flush spills on the spouting waste. Loud and louder the darkened sea, the wind shrills on a monotone. Sky and deep, wrecked confusedly, travail and cry as one. Long I look on the deepening sky, the chill star, the forlorn sea breaking. For what does my spirit cry? For what is my heart so aching? Is it home? But I have no home. Is it tears? But I no more weep. Is it love? Love went by dumb. Is it sleep? But I would not sleep. Must I fare, then, in fear and fever, on a journey become thrice far, whose sun has gone down forever, whose night brings no guiding star? The wind roars, and an ashen beam waving up shrinks away in haste. The waves crash, the star's trickling gleam travels the warring waste. I look up, in the windy height the lone orb serene and afar, shakes with excess of her light. Beauty, be thou my star. 
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Aftermath 6 The Full Heart by Robert Nichols. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. 6 The Full Heart. Alone on the shore, in the pause of the night time, I stand and I hear the long wind blow light. I view the constellations quietly, quietly burning. I hear the wave fall in the hush of the night. Long after I am dead, ended this bitter journey. Many another whose heart holds no light. Shall your solemn sweetness hush on comfort? O oh, my companions, wind, waters, stars, and night. Near Gold Cap, 1916. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Aftermath 7 Sonnet, Our Dead By Robert Nichols Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo 7. Sonnet, Our Dead They have not gone from us. Oh no, they are. The inmost essence of each thing that is. Perfect for us, they flame in every star. The trees are emerald with their presences. They are not gone from us. They do not roam. The flaw and turmoil of the lower deep. But have now made the whole wide world their home. And in its loveliness themselves they steep. They fail not ever. Theirs is the diurn splendor of sunny hill and forest grave. In every rainbow's glittering drop they burn. They dazzle in the mass cloud's architrave. They chant on every wind and they return in the long roll of any deep blue wave. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Aftermath 8 Deliverance by Robert Nichols. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. 8 Deliverance Out of the night, out of the night I come, free at last, the whole world is my home. I have lost self, I look not on myself again, but if I do, I see a man among men. Out of the night, out of the night, O oh flesh, soul I know not from body within thy mesh. Accepting all that is, I cannot divide the same. I accept the smoke, because I accept the flame. Out of the night, out of the night, O oh friends, O oh, all my dead, think ye our friendship ends? Harold, Kenneth, Dick, many hearts that were true, while I breathe breath, I am breathing you. Out of the night, out of the night, O oh power, many a fight to be won, many an awful hour. Many an hour to wish death ere I go to death. Many an hour to bless breath ere I cease from breath. Out of the night, out of the night, O oh soul, give thanks to the night, night and day are the whole. I count mere life breath nothing now, I know life's worth, lies all in spending, that known, love life and earth. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. End of Argers and Endurances by Robert Nichols